the biggest council and the council with the biggest weather tightness problem is the Auckland Super City. John Gray. Right. Yeah, let's take you upstairs. Here we are at Auckland City Council's Building Consent Authority Division to speak with Mr Bob Delure, who's the Principal Building Officer. Bob is an important link in the chain. He was a key player in the Council in the 90s and has a background in the building industry himself. Surely he must have the answers as to how the Council got it so wrong. Bob, good thing. I was in the construction industry many years ago. You know, the joke in the industry was Auckland is being held together by silicon and that is a phase that we went through. In fact, we saw so much silicon starting to be used instead of mechanical flashings in the industry. It became a bit of a joke in the industry because silicon was held out to be the most wonderful product in the world. It was certainly shown on manufacturers' literature as providing an adequate flashing system. For building control officers such as yourself coming out of the industry, having awareness of the, the, the poor efficacy of silicon, that you didn't take a closer look. OK, we will ask the question, how does this comply with the building code? Well, here's a report from our scientists sitting at NASA that, in fact, we've tested this product and it works wonderfully well if you apply it in this situation. The testing had been done, the product had been released onto the market, an appraisal had been received by local authorities. Why would we have any doubt in that? We've got to be able to rely on someone. It's interesting that silicon was a joke until Bob needed to defend the council's decision to approve it. Back in Christchurch, Mike Antisich has even stronger views. You asked me what is the cause of leaky homes. One of the major ones is flashings that come in a tube. I'd like to get the whole lot. Sealants. Yeah, throw them away. A lot of these sealants are not supposed to be open to the sunlight and to the weather anyway. And so you get microscopic gaps and they work like a venturi effect. They just suck the moisture in. Whereas if you had an old mechanical flashing, which is on your 1900 villa, it's still working. It seems that the courts agree that councils are de facto quality controllers. So they're the obvious target for leaky homeowners looking for compensation. That must be a real dilemma for councils, fighting Good citizens morning, in court using rates. The figures must be huge. The whole crew here. Yes, indeed. OK, we're ready to go. This yeah. is one area where John Banks must be relieved he's no longer the mayor. I get no pleasure at all of spending $4.8 million of your money, rate pass money, last year on lawyers to fix a problem that only Bob the Builder can fix. The potential liability that uh, you know, a large number of councils throughout the country are having to bear has been always brought about by the fact that they simply have failed to properly discharge their duties. This has been a degree of negligence. When the council drops the ball, and in this case councils have dropped the ball. That's why councils need to pick up quite a lot of the liability. And it's not just Auckland. In some ways, the Christchurch problem is worse. Houses still leak and rot, only more slowly, because the climate's different from Auckland. And because there is a 10-year cut-off point for people to put in compensation claims, what happens to owners whose houses don't show signs of leaks until after 10 years? For Janet Paulson, it was deja vu. She's already been burned by a leaky home in Auckland, missing the 10-year limitation by only a matter of weeks. So when she suspected her apartment in Christchurch had problems, she didn't want to miss out again. This is four reports now that all say there's issues in the complex, and the body corporate hadn't told any of the owners, didn't want to know about um, looking at taking a claim. Worried that the 10-year limitation was just around the corner once again, Janet was astounded when it became clear that the body corporate didn't believe that they had a problem. So what are the other owners doing? Are they taking any steps to repair their building? Not really. <laughs> They've um, said that they'll look at it as a maintenance issue. Can you do anything more to, to actually make them realise there's a problem? I think that they'll know there's a problem when we apply for our building consent to get our defects repaired. Six months later, with the other owners still disputing this, Janet is taking a claim for repairs to the district court. I want to ask Christchurch Mayor Bob Parker what he thinks about all this. Good morning, Mayor's Office. speaking. I'm just wondering if uh, Mayor Parker was available to speak to me, please. No, sorry, he's not in the office at the moment. Can you email me the questions and we'll get back to you? We're not going to be fobbed off. We need to address some of these issues directly to the Mayor. 
manager. Just wondering if we've made any progress in uh, so far as uh, Mayor Parker's availability. Now, the mayor's not available to comment on the issue, but we can organise somebody else from the council to give you some facts and figures and things. It really sounds like Bob doesn't want to talk to us, and I've got my doubts a council official can answer the sort of questions I want to ask. It's a lack of transparency, that willingness to actually come out and speak about the problem, which is, you know, very disappointing. And the fact that we are now having to leave Christchurch without having spoken to the Mayor, and we're just going to have to come back at some other time. The whole area of blame and liability is a murky one, largely because the financial costs are so staggering. But sometimes the case seems open and shut. The Reverend David Moore had just one such case. He ended up with an offer that, financially at least, he couldn't refuse. Can you tell us how much the, the, the overall cost of repair ended up being? Well, it's a confidential settlement, so I don't think I can. You're obviously very... Can we say very happy? Oh, um, delighted. Delirious. Are you allowed to say that? Oh, there's nothing that says I can't say I'm deliriously happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also true that it comes at quite a high price. I mean, we knew at the time that what this meant was that everything would then be concealed. And, and that's a terrible, terrible place to be in because I didn't want it concealed for the sake of others. You know, there are so many people in this, in this situation and the, the silence and the concealment of it is, is actually part of the problem. So what is it you can't talk about? Well, I mean, the obvious thing is I can't say how much and I can't say who the parties were. I can't talk about um, the council's paper trail I've got a massive correspondence, and that paper trail clearly implicates both institutions as well as processes. So perhaps it's just the potential liability that's making them behave the way they are. It seems to be. Their lawyers take a very aggressive stance against claimants. Very aggressive. How do you feel about that in terms of you know, ratepayers' money being spent on high-powered Auckland lawyers? to come down and fight fellow ratepayers. Sick. There have potentially been thousands of agreements throughout New Zealand where leaky homeowners have signed mediation settlements that have imposed gagging orders on them. And it seems to be quite a tactical move, particularly on the part of councils, to ensure that the very good outcomes are kept below the radar. As part of settlement, councils demand a signature on a document absolving them of any liability. Whilst this is considered normal commercial practice, it does mean councils can claim never to have been found liable when negotiating future claims. A week later, I'm back in Christchurch. Mayor Bob Parker remains adamant he won't talk to me, and the council have put up Steve McCarthy instead. Are you really convinced that people are aware that there's a potential problem with their monolithically clad homes? I, I believe people uh, are aware of the issue with uh, plastic clad buildings. Uh, and, um, you know, homeowners would be, uh, I think, taking precautions. Are you aware of any other sort of... Well, this is either a mistake or a clever media stunt. Here's Mayor Parker. Greetings, anyway. John Gray. G'day, John. Bob Parker. Please meet you, Bob. Why, why did you choose to come and talk to me? Well, I think uh, my staff have been a little over overprotective, frankly. What can you do for your citizens that are sitting in a home that's leaky and defective, that's 11 years old and they have absolutely no ability to claim and have no funds to repair it, seriously you know, affecting their health, both yep. mentally and, and physically? Well, I think at that stage the problem has to go up another level, frankly, because it won't be an issue that's limited to Christchurch, if the scenario is true, or to Tamuka or Wellington or Auckland or Manukau. It's going to be a nationwide problem. I certainly agree that central government has a huge part to play in addressing this whole sorry state of affairs.